Hey everyone, welcome back to Bono's Tech Stuff. In today's video, we're going to learn how to turn a Raspberry Pi Zero into a little device that can steal password hashes from computers even when the computer is locked. This is more of a just for fun type of project with not a whole ton of practical use. And with this type of tool, you have to be careful. Um, you have to test it on either systems that are your own or systems that you have permission to test it on. You can't just go plugging it into random computers at work or something like that. Now that that little disclaimer is out of the way, here's how this project came about. I was doing some research online and saw a post by Rob Fuller, AKA Mubix, on how he created a device using a uh, USB armory that could steal the password hashes of locked computers. I did a quick search online and found a blog that showed how to do the same thing with a Raspberry Pi Zero. From that blog's instructions, I was able to create a script that automated the entire setup process of the Raspberry Pi. It is my first bash script, so any criticism is completely welcome, and if you don't want to use my script and you want to set it up all manually, you can still go to that blog. I left a link for it in the description. I also wanted to mention a couple other things before we get started. This is just a tutorial on how to set up the Raspberry Pi to steal the password hash. This is not a tutorial on how to crack that password hash. Also, uh, with this, it is not guaranteed that you will even get a password hash. I've had between an 85 and a 90% success rate on the devices that I have tried. Here's the outline for the rest of the video. First, we're going to do a quick demo of what we are going to accomplish today. Then we're going to go over what parts we need. Then we're going to install Raspbian Lite and enable SSH. Next, we're going to download the script and make it executable. Then we're going to run it as root, which takes about 10 minutes. And then finally, we're going to test. So first, we're going to plug in the Raspberry Pi into our target computer. It's going to take a few seconds to boot up. And then the computer recognizes it as a USB to Ethernet device. The Pi will then um, start as a DHCP server. Responder will automatically start and request NTLM version 2 credentials. Those will then be saved on the Raspberry Pi's local drive. It will then shut itself off automatically once it detects that change. We can then boot it back up at home and see that it stole the NTLM v2 hash. The hash can then be copied over to your cracking machine and then cracked with either Hashcat or John the Ripper Jumbo. And look at that, it found my password, Tester McTestface. For more information on how this attack works, please visit Mubix's blog, room362.com. And now that we are done with the demo, let's look at what parts we need. First, you will need a Raspberry Pi Zero. This project will not work on any other Raspberry Pi. Then you will need a data micro USB cable. It will not work with a micro USB cable that was only meant for charging. Next is a USB to ethernet cable, a micro USB to USB adapter, a micro SD card. Then you will need some kind of adapter to make it so that you can image the micro SD card. Then you will need an ethernet cable. And then finally you will need a compatible power supply. 
Now that we have our parts, we can move on to installing Raspbian and enabling SSH. So first things first, plug in your micro SD card into your computer. I'm going to be using Windows for this part. Then go to raspberrypi.org and download the latest Raspbian Lite image. Once the download is finished, unzip the folder and use Win32 Disk Imager to image Raspbian Lite to your micro SD card. Just make sure that you run it as administrator. For Mac and Linux, you don't have to download anything extra. You can just use the command line to DD the image to the SD card. If you need further help on imaging the micro SD card, you can visit raspberrypi.org. If you are using an older image of Raspberry and Lite, you can skip this part because SSH is already enabled. If you are using the 2016 11-25 or later image of Raspbian Lite, you have to enable SSH by putting a file called SSH on the micro SD card. After the card is finished imaging, eject it and plug it back into your computer. On Windows, navigate to the SD card and right click and then do new text document. Call it SSH and then delete the .txt. This will only work if there's no extension. Once this is done, you can eject the micro SD card. On Linux and Mac, just open up terminal prompt and navigate to the SD card and then type in touch SSH and hit enter. That will create a file called SSH and then SSH will be enabled when you boot up. Next, put the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi Zero, then connect the micro USB to USB adapter to the Ethernet to USB adapter and plug that into your Raspberry Pi. Then you can plug in the Ethernet cable and then you can plug in the power. In order to download the script, we will need to SSH into our Raspberry Pi Zero. In Windows, we will use PuTTY to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. In Linux and Mac, you can just open up Terminal and SSH in that way. If you don't know the IP address of your USB to Ethernet adapter, you may have to log into your router and figure out which IP address is assigned to it, or use an IP scanner or something like that. So open up PuTTY and type in the IP address of the Ethernet to USB adapter. I have mine saved already, so I can just click open. Accept the RSA key and log in as Pi with the password of Raspberry. Next, you can download the script from my GitHub. The link is in the description. I will also put it here on screen. I would advise inspecting it and making sure that there's nothing malicious going on, like if my GitHub got hacked or something like that. And once you feel comfortable with the code, you can click raw and then copy the URL and go back to putty and then type in wget space and then paste in the URL by right-clicking in the PuTTY window, and then hit enter. You've now successfully downloaded the script, but we have to make it executable. To do this, type in chmod space 755 space pisponder.sh and hit enter. Now we just have to run the script, and it will do all the setup for us. To do this, simply type in sudo space dot forward slash pisponder dot sh and hit enter. The script should run for about 10 minutes depending on your internet connection. And when it's done, you can just type in sudo space halt to shut down your Raspberry Pi Zero. And now we finally get to test it out. 
We can start off by unplugging all the cables, including the USB to power, and then we need to go find a Windows machine to plug it into, preferably one that already has putty on it, so that we can test it and make sure that it grabbed the credentials correctly. Once you found a test machine, plug in the USB-A part into the computer and then the micro USB part back into your Raspberry Pi Zero and it will start to boot up, just like in the demo. The only difference is because this is the first time we are using it, the way the script works is it won't shut down on the very first time because the database that stores the credentials hasn't been created yet. So what you're doing this time is creating it, and then the next time you use it, once it detects a change in that database, it will automatically shut itself down. After a few minutes have gone by, you can open up PuTTY again and SSH to 192.168.200.1. We're using that address because that's the, ad the static IP address that we gave it in my script. Once you open that up, you can log in as Pi and then CD to opt responder. So when we list out all the files that are in the responder directory, we see the responder.db and that is the database where all the credentials are held. So we can see if it loaded in the credentials by typing in cat space responder.db and it did find the credentials. So now we can go back and we can CD into the logs directory. And in the logs directory, we can see that there's the HTTP dash ntlmv2 192.168.200.192.txt. That is the file that you will want to copy off and put through your hash cracking machine to get the password. And that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this one, and I will see you guys next time.